Hi there, welcome to another video from Hegarty Maths, a call for Maths A level video on vectors. It's our fifth one on vectors, and we're talking about position vectors and 2D vectors. For more help with your maths, do check out the YouTube, Twitter, or Google. Okay, just to make clear, this is the fifth video and it's for LXL call for Maths A level, but should be applicable to most other A level modules. We've talked about position vectors. In this video, we're particularly focusing on vectors in two dimensions and getting some terminology right for those. Just a quick reminder on position vectors. Remember if I had two points in space, one's A, one's B, the vector between them, uh, we might call that something like C, and it's telling us how to get from A to B. And similarly, to go from B to A would be negative C. With a position vector, one of your points in space is the origin. Okay, so in a set of axes, let's say one of your points in space is the origin. Okay, and you are going from the origin to, let's say, point B this time. And that is the vector OB. And you probably sometimes call that little b. Okay, so the key thing here about position vectors is one of the points is the origin, and that's what we talked about in a previous video, and you've copied this definition down. So that was position vectors. Um, now, we had this picture on the previous uh, video, but I want to take uh, something a little further here. Now, this is the x-axis, and this is the y-axis. Imagine I called one unit going that way in the x-axis, Imagine I call that vector i, and one unit going in the y direction, the positive y direction, vector j. This is common mathematical notation, okay? So to go uh, left would be negative i, and to go uh, down would be negative j. So remember, underline these, these are a vector. So up here, i goes one unit across, one unit right, and j goes one unit up. So similarly, this would be negative i, and this would be negative j, to go down and left, okay, one unit. Now imagine we had that scenario, we could now talk about how to get from the vector o to a. o to a, Well, it would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5 across, and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 up. So I might write that as 5i plus 7j, like that. And how would I get from O to B? Well, O to B, I could now write that as 1, 2, 3, 4, uh, sorry, 1, 2, 3 across, so 3i plus... 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 down, which would be negative 5j. So I would actually just write that straight away as negative 5j. How would I get from O to C? Well, I'd go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 left, so negative 8i, and I'd go 2 up, so plus 2j. And lastly, O to D, well, I would go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, negative 8, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. To so be negative 8i, subtract negative 9j. And there, that would be a, an actual accurate way of writing these vectors and how to get to them. Okay? Now, one further thing, I'm going to take that a, a step further, here's a bit of notation. So we can write any vector in two dimensions as how far across and how far up and down with i and j's. But a bit neater, we usually write these as a column vectors. So I'd write this as 5, 7. I'd write this as 3, negative 5. I'd write this as negative 8, 2. And I'd write this as negative 8, negative 9. Okay, so these uh, these are some notation. This is how you write 2D vectors. You can either write it as a certain amount of i's plus a certain amount of j's, i.e. how far across and up and down you go, 
or you can write it as a column vector. Probably preferred is the column vector approach. Now, one thing to say, do not confuse something like 5, 7 with 5, 7. They are different. 5, 7 is the point in space, 5, 7. It's point A. It is the a point in space. Column vector 5, 7 is the vector, this vector here, that brings you from the origin to A. It's that direction and movement, and that would be called lit lay. Okay, so these things are different. That's a point in space, a coordinate. This is a vector, a direction and movement, and so it's a, it's written in vector notation. Okay, so some uh, something there for you. The last thing I might want to say is how would you get from let's say A to C? Okay, how would you get from A to C? Well, using our previous work, we said if this was this might be called vector A, this is vector B, this is vector D, and this is vector C. We said it would be neg uh, negative A plus C or C subtract A. So we could write this as the vector C, which is negative A2 and we would subtract away from it the vector a which is 5 7 like that and we would get ourselves negative 13 negative 5 and let's check that what works does get from here to here negative 13 negative 5 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 negative 13 spot on and then negative 5 be 1 2 3 4 negative 5 it doesn't in fact work. Okay, so we can still use our position vectors and uh, subtraction with them in order to get between uh, points in space. So here's an example. Here you might want to pause the video and have a go at this. I'll go through in three seconds. Okay, here's the next y-axis. This is your origin. Going across here one unit would be I, going up here one unit would be J. And we've got points in space A and B and position vectors A, little a and little b. That's the point from the origin to point A. And so the vector from the origin to point A and little b is the vector from the origin to point B. A and B in the diagram have coordinates 3, 4. So this is coordinates 3, 4 and this is coordinates 11, 2. Find the position vector of A. Well, the position vector of A is the vector going from O to A, and we know that's 3, uh, three I, 3 right, and 4 up. And we probably prefer writing this as 3, 4. It's nicer like that. The position vector of B, that means the origin to B, and we know that's 11I plus 2J, and again, we'd probably write that as 11, 2. And the vector to AB, now if you want to go from A to B, you will remember it's position vector B minus position vector A. You go back, back B and up A. And taking these vectors away, it would be 11, 2, subtract 3, 4. And so it would be 8, negative 2. And let's, check that. and let's actually check that works to go from A to B. Well, you do go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 across, correct. And then you go two, 1, 2 down, so negative 2. Correct. Okay, um, adding and subtracting vectors, I've already touched upon this. Imagine these were our vectors A, B, and C. Um, what would A plus B be? Well, actually, A is uh, 1i plus 1j. I'd probably write that as 1, 1. B is 2, 3. And C is 4, negative 6. Okay, what is vector A plus B? Well, it will be easiest to do that as 1, 1 plus 2, 3, which is clearly um, 3, 4. Okay, you just add the tops and add the bottoms. What would A plus B plus C be? Well, you know A plus B is 3, 4. So it would be 3, 4 plus what this is here, 4, negative 6. 3 plus 4 is 7, 4 plus negative 6 is negative 2, 
a subtract b, well that's going to be 1, 1, subtract 2, 3, which is going to be 1 subtract 2 is negative 2, 1 subtract 3 is negative, sorry, 1 subtract 2 is negative 1, 1 subtract 3 is negative 2, and finally b, c, well that's going to be 2, 3, subtract 4, negative 6, 2 take away 4 is negative 2, and 3 subtract negative 6 is 3 plus 6, which is 9. And, uh, you know, just some uh, idea for how these might work um, and why they work. Let's just pick this, this first one, for example, A plus B. If I start with A, A is 1I plus 1J. So A goes across 1 and up 1, so A is there. Uh, that's position vector A. This is must be little vector A here. So that's little vector A, okay? And then B is 2i plus 3j, and you're adding that onto this. So you're going a further 2 across and 3 up. So it would be another 2 across and maybe 3 up like that. And that would be vector B. So in total, you've gone 1 across and then 2 across. So to get from here to here, clearly you've gone 3 across in total. And you've also gone 1 up and then 3 up, so you've gone 4 up in total. Hence why this vector here should be 3, 4, when you add them together. Okay? Right, pause the video, have a go at the following. So I would straight away write them as column vectors. A is going to be 2, 5. B is going to be 12, negative 10 and c is going to be negative 3, 9. Find a plus b plus c using column notation. So a plus b plus c, we're just adding these vectors. So we're adding 2, 5 plus 12, negative 10 plus negative 3, 9. 12 add 2 is 14. Add negative 3 is 11. 5 add negative 10 is negative 5. But then add 9 and you get 4. And that's your answer. Simple. Which you could write back in the form 11i plus 4j. Okay, next thing we need to talk about is the magnitude of vectors. You'll remember from our previous work, the modulus or magnitude of a vector is the length of the line. Now say, here's a vector, okay? And it goes x across, and it goes x across and y up. Given that i and j are at right angles to each other, this is a right angle triangle, and the length of this line must be x squared plus y squared square rooted. Okay, because x is the number across it's going, y is the number up it's going, so it would be x squared plus y squared square rooted. Okay, so what's the modulus of a? Well, if we need to draw a picture, let's draw a picture. i plus j is saying 1 across, 1 up, so we're finding the length of that line, so 1 across and 1 up, so the length of that line is 1 squared plus 1 squared square root 2, which is square root of 2. What's the modulus of, of b? Well, b is 2i plus 3j, so b goes 2 across and 3 up, okay? So this is 2 across here and 3 up, right angle triangle, the modulus of b is therefore the square root of 2 squared plus 3 squared. 2 squared is 4, 3 squared is 9, it's going to be root 13. Now the modulus of a plus b, the first thing to do before you do any working is to actually work out a plus b. Now a plus b is 1, 1 plus 2, 3, which is 3, 4, okay, or 3i plus 4j. So therefore the modulus of a plus b is the modulus of this vector 3 across 4 up. So it would be 3 squared plus 4 squared square rooted, which would be 5. Okay, and the next one, how would you work out the modulus of b minus a? Well, the very first thing you do, let's work out b minus a. So b minus a would be 2, 3, take away uh, 1, 1 which would be 1, 2. And then the modulus of b minus a 
would therefore be equal to the square root of 1 squared plus 2 squared, which would be equal to square root 5. Okay? So, the modulus is the uh, length of the uh, vector, and to use it, to find it, you use Pythagoras' theorem in two dimensions. How many across squared and how many up squared, all of that square rooted. Have a go at this question. So here's our vector. Our vector a is equal to 5i subtract 12j, which we sometimes might write as 5, negative 12. If we were to draw a picture to help us, it's 5 across and negative 12 down. So it's 5 that way and 12 that way. What's the length of the line? Well, the modulus of a is clearly, therefore, the length of that line. We just want the length of that line. It's the square root of 5 squared plus 12 squared. So it's equal to 13. So the length of that line is equal to 13. And it says find a unit direction a vector in the same direction of, of A. This is the vector A. A unit vector is the vector with size 1. Now vector A currently has size 13. So therefore, if we took the vector A and divided it by 13, the magnitude, this would certainly be in the direction of A, but would have size 1. So that is our answer for the last part. Here's another one for you to have a go at. So A is equal to 5i plus j. B is equal to negative 2i minus negative 4j, <coughs> uh, which is 5, 1, and which is negative 2, negative 4. So we want to work out the modulus of 2a plus b. Before we do that, let's work out 2a plus b. Well, that's 2 times this vector 5, 1. 2 lots of 5, 1. So 5, 1 and 5, 1 plus negative 2, negative 4. This must be equal to 10, 2 plus negative 2, negative 4. 2 lots of 5, 1 means going 5 across and 5 across, which is 10 across, and 1 up and 1 up, which is 2 up. And we could keep going with this, and therefore this would be equal to 8, negative 2. So the modulus of 2a subtract b plus b must be 8 squared plus negative 2 squared square rooted. Okay, which will be um, 64 plus 4, which would be the square root of 68. And you could simplify that, etc. But let's just leave it like that for now. And that's it for this particular video. So do make sure you read over the chapter, page 61 to 63, and then do exercise 5D, questions 1 to 4. Thank you for watching.